Hey, Hootettes, welcome into the film study today, taking a look at new tight end Foster Moreau. We're going to see how this could impact the team and talk about a couple ways that you can expect New Orleans Saints to hopefully take advantage of Moreau as well as Juwan Johnson. Now, obviously, we're going to be focusing on Moreau today because they did uh, add him to the squad with a recent signing this week, which, first off, Foster, look, very excited for you. Obviously, all of us hate cancer, and even though I'm not going to like go too crazy because this is a YouTube video, and they're like, or requires about no cussing, we can all agree on one thing, which is <laughs> cancer. Yeah, just completely F it. We don't like it. So happy that you had a great you know, prognosis and you're, you're pulling through. So let's talk about what this can actually mean for the New Orleans Saints and go over the basics of Foster here real quick. So here's his career stats. Here's his size. All these different little details that everybody's going to want to know. So 6'4", 250, good length, good athlete when it comes to how he plays the game, how he adjusts to playing on the fly in terms of as a receiver. I felt like last year he improved as a receiver. Still not necessarily anything crazy. And then as a run blocker, that's definitely where he struggles the most. But we'll talk about that here in the tape. I do want to set realistic expectations for Moreau when I, when I look at this. And remember, even though I talk about how one film this one you know video we're going to watch which is actually the 2021 game against the philadelphia eagles this is not enough to do a scouting report okay so take it take the time go look at him for yourself study him for yourself but we're going to look at the traits here look at some of the route running look at how he performs on the field and then try to give a good estimation you know to the best of our ability of what he can do for new orleans but i do want to say i don't expect him to come in and be a thousand yard tight end you know, what I would think is a great year for him is 600 to 700 yards, five to seven TDs, and that's a great year. And I think that's okay. This is definitely what New Orleans could use. It definitely could help him out. Let's go ahead and rotate over into the tape. Now, what we're going to start with here is just a quick little seven-yard hitch route. And you're going to see a variety of techniques used by Moreau and a variety of routes run. We're going to start with some basic ones, though. So there is bottom of your screen. Just real quick, use our Madden pin to identify, and then we'll get the play in. Now, remember, he is a traditional inline tight end, even though he operates best in terms of what he's shown tape-wise as best as a flex tight end. Now, this isn't to knock him, just to simply say what he does well and what he is best at. So bottom of your screen here, lining up on the line like you would expect your tight end to do. And just a quick release, good, bam, sits in the soft part of the zone. It's a good read, actually, pre-snap, post-snap by both Derek Carr and Moreau, knowing where that zone's going to drop off. Finds that little soft spot. You can see he starts in his cut, presents a target. He's presenting it towards the open side of the field, so that's good. In terms of when we're starting our hitch, you know, we don't want to curl it in. We want to be curling away from the nearest defender in the zone. And he does a good job to present. And right at seven yards, sits, hits the pass, turns up field, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Nothing terribly exciting. This is not just like, wow, what a mind-blowing play, though I will give you a mind-blowing catch in this. Just good, solid route running, good, solid understanding of what he's going to face in terms of what the defense is presenting. And these are the type of things that you want to see. You know, this is basic, fundamental, convert, make first sounds football, which is what you need from your tight end. You know, this is not a signing that, you know, brings back the days of Jimmy Graham. But what it can do, we'll do a little rewind real quick. What it can do is even though they're in 11 personnel here, what this can mean is you actually have more 12 personnel. We've talked about this on Twitter. Myself and Nick Underhill are talking about it. So, we say 12 personnel, we're talking one running back and two tight ends. That would be Foster right here. And then you could talk about having Jawan Johnson right there. I think that when you're talking about putting the best weapons on the field, you definitely want depth because yeah, sometimes you do want three or even four wide receivers, but sometimes you want two tight ends, depending on the matchup that you're facing. If you want to take advantage of multiple defenses, you have to have multiple offensive alignments. So move to another play. I want to take a few minutes to cover his blocking. And I know some of y'all will be like, that's boring. Nobody cares about blocking, but honestly, the New Orleans Saints do and have for a long time, so we need to care about it. But let's look at a few plays of that before we get back to the receiving game. I know, super exciting. Everybody's leaving now, but if you stick around, like the video. Film studies are good for everybody. We all love film. Film is amazing. All right, so you're going to have him do a motion real quick. See him coming across the line, coming through, and then this is going to be one of his blocking reps. 
Good job to try to take that half man relationship and let inside uh, move from what is essentially a wide nine. He's going to try to cut inside. He's going to get hands in. Doesn't let the rip break him. Now, one thing that you'll notice here, he is losing ground continually. And this is going to be expected from your tight end. One thing I will say he does better at, pass blocking is superior to run blocking when it comes to the tape that Moreau has put out over the past two years. He is not a very good run blocker. You'll see that in a second. But when it comes to setting an anchor, getting in the way, and getting hands in, as a pass blocker, he's actually got some decent reps. This is not amazing, but it is a little bit of, you know, getting some of that momentum down the line and also capturing his block and maintaining for about three seconds. That's a positive. We'll take these type of reps. We'll be happy with them. They're not perfect, though, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that he is a dominant pass blocker or run blocker because he's not. But I do think it's something that he can hopefully continue to improve on, but he also does well enough to where you don't feel he's a liability in the pass blocking game when used on the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at another one. In fact, we're going to take a look at a play that if you've studied Josh Hill before, you'll be very familiar with this style of run that's been in the New Orleans Saints offense for a long time. It's called split zone. So split zone, just uh, put up a big SZ here so we can look really cool with our Madden pen. I just like using it. The split zone means that we're going to have our offensive line zone blocking, uh, outside zone blocking. So you're going to see all them doing their normal movement, blocking down. Now, remember zone blocking, the entire line is moving as a unit, moving in one direction, laterally, and moving forward. Split zone is going to have your backside block be by your tight end right here. So what Moreau is going to do is circle back and block the backside. So when we talk about what you remember, this is Josh Hill's role for a long time in New Orleans. This is what he did so well. This is not so well if you're Foster Moreau. This is not a good job. It's not even getting in the way. It's not even getting contact. Now, this is just an example. But when I'm talking about he struggles in the run game versus, you know, the pass blocking game, this is just an area I don't feel like he's got comfortability there. I don't feel like the experience is there, but I also just don't feel like he's super comfortable. The spatial awareness when it comes to finding his target, hitting the mark, and getting to a spot, it's almost like he treats run blocking like he would receiving. And when you're a receiver, you know that there's marks that you just got to get to. There's landmarks. If you're playing four verts, I'm just going to draw the lines as an example because it's something that everybody knows. If we're playing four verts, we know that our marks stay the same no matter what. We're just Our job is to get to the mark and then make the play. So in four verts, if you're a tight end or you're the inside guy, your marks are the hashes. And you know to expect, depending on what route you're running, whether it's four verts or mesh concepts or seven-yard breaks, 12-yard breaks, and it feels like that's kind of how it is for Foster is he treats run blocking the same way that he treats running routes, which is I know on the play sheet my – so let's just do a quick little draw here. I know this is fantastic art. You can appreciate it. You can comment down below how amazing it is. So it's almost like he treats it. This is him in this split zone block. This is Foster Moreau. He's like, hey, I just know I've got to get to this spot, and then i got to block whoever's there. Instead of reading it as he's going through the process, he just knows that i got to get there which is what you would kind of do in route running. Now, yes, route running requires awareness, and you definitely want to adjust to what you know defenders are presenting you, all that other stuff. We already saw him do that with the seven-yard hitch route, but I think it's just kind of one of those where he gets on the move. It's not something he's terribly comfortable with or terribly good at yet, so he misses, and he whiffs here because it, it actually looks like he's going to have a good block on the EMLOS, in man on the line of scrimmage. He's going to get a good backside block here. It's there. He just doesn't get it and it doesn't end up mattering it's a backside guy you can argue the backside guy makes the play but he makes the play like 10 yards downfield so again this isn't like the super important role that is like too incredible but still you want to see him hit that block but again there are pass block reps that are really nice that can maybe offset some of the negatives when we're talking about the run blocking so let's take a look at this rep for example I think this is a real good one. Got him down in line from a three-point stance. Bam. That's just solid. Lock him up. That's beautiful. I mean, that is really good for a tight end, anyway. Pass block. You get in there, take control, set an anchor. You're not expected to have all the things. Like, I don't expect him to, you know, use the forklift, collapse one arms. Yeah, you know, I don't expect greatness here, but I expect at least a basic anchor and using the play strength that you have at your size to your advantage. He does that. Again, this is against Bennett. It's nothing amazing. Or, or Barnett. 
This is not an amazing block, but it's solid. And this is good enough. And that's okay. Good job to get out there. You saw a quick first step, liked it. Almost like you're treating it like a jump set if you were a tackle. Getting out there, engaging, low leverage. See that right there to set an anchor? He's low man. And he's not winning a hands battle. He's just using his grip strength and taking on a pretty decent sized defender there to get the block in. So I think reps like this give you a little bit of confidence in terms of him on the line as a pass blocker. But if we look at a lot of the reps that he'll have just as a run blocker, you're just going to go, eh, not really there. But he's got some clean releases. And then you get to this play right here, which is actually one of my favorites from him. This is beautiful. This goes to show how he can impact the team. We talk about 12 personnel, what you can provide. You kind of have a similar look here. So this would be Moreau. And in this instance, your 12 personnel look would be right there. That's Juwan Johnson. In your head, imagine Juwan Johnson. A lot of things you can do with this look that create mismatches for a team that's maybe playing nickel. And you can use these bigger body guys to match up against these smaller DBs if they have good ability in terms of their route running and their receiving. Now, this is going to be a beautiful catch by Moreau. Watch the slip through, come up, and he's traveling to where he has leverage. Why? You, normally, you would say, hey, we want to run straight up this seam. But if you look at the pre-snap read and then how it rotates, and Philly does this all the time, right at the pre-snap, what's your read? Middle of the field closed. So we got to be very mindful of this safety. So as we carry our route, we know that our leverage is outside the shoulders outside the hips of who's defending us. If we go inside, we're doubled up. So it's a great job to recognize that trail is marked and you see take advantage, turning, and then great catch because it's not a great throw. In fact, look at it from this angle. This is not the best throw by Derek Carr. So here's your play action. Read it. And this is him making the catch. That's impressive. That's good hands. Like, this is something to get excited about. Like, hey, what quality is good about Foster Moreau? He's got good hands. Decent route runner. Not amazing, but some great hands, some great play strength. We talk about offensive linemen having grip strength. Well, that's part of being you know, a receiver here as well. This is a fantastic rep, fantastic play, simply based on catching the football. So shout out to him on it. But it's also good understanding where this route needs to layer and go as well. Because if it goes middle of the field, it's never there right you know pick off chance etc so you've got to have car understanding this you got to have moreau understanding it and that's when you talk about can there be an importance to a rapport between a receiver and between a quarterback i think it's a good example of you know good instances from multiple angles let's look at another play of how you can see moreau use this is going to be a little underneath rub and again i don't think foster moreau is a number one type of a guy and what i mean by that is he's not a, he's not jimmy graham right like you're not putting him up against the best corner or best safety and not worrying about it. You help scheme him open some plays though. It's exactly what you do here. You got a little natural rub you're creating. We're gonna have our point man clear out and then you're gonna swing underneath and try to hit the area that he's clearing for you. It's a good play design. You see this around the league all the time. So watch him come underneath. Good clean release. See that natural rub, we took it away. Now that defender's gotta come uh, that zone underneath and you hit the hole. Right there. It doesn't matter if there's four guys around. You did enough to clear that space. You held the safety from dropping down on it. And even though you're going against a zone, I feel like this is something the Saints are going to see a lot of. It's a great job. Like I said, you, you pulled enough where you get in the way. You're going to hit this empty area. The safety has to respect that middle route as well as pay attention to both. So you've got him in conflict. And it's a good job of knowing when to present and knowing where to sit exactly what you have from Foster right here. He understands the depth and he's literally in the middle of all the different zones. You got the short zones right here. You got that natural rub that's cleared out the middle, blocked that off. And even though you had that drop down defender here towards the boundary, he's not going to come make a play from your backside. You held the safety. Look at all this just green, green grass. This is play design, but also to execute this, you have to have the understanding as a player, as a quarterback, where this should be and where this ball needs to go. It's exactly what you get here. It's one of the reasons I like this play so much. It's nothing crazy. This doesn't show Foster Moreau is this elite physical talent who's bodying people out. But it does show, hey, he understands the game. He understands his role in his assignment. And he can execute it when given the opportunity. 
I think it's always important when we look at these type of film studies to set realistic expectations. And this is why I go back to that graphic I showed you. This is why stats matter. We don't box score scout. And what I mean by that is we don't take the box score up there and say, oh, well, he's great or not great based on him having this many yards. But what it can be is an indicator that you go to the tape and verify, all right, well, does he have shortcomings? Where does he struggle? What does he do well? And hopefully the tape verifies what the box score shows. But there's also things that the box score can't show, like usability. What if you're just not using tight ends in that role for this particular team? And you've seen that where guys will go from one team to the other and suddenly they pop off. Well, a lot of times that's just usability. That's just how often your number's being called based on how that team believes you fit in the offense. So I think if you're the Saints, take the same approach. Similar to how he had success here, you take advantage of that and you do that in New Orleans. Now, another one I want to take a look at just because it's a pretty unique play. And we've seen him attack the seam down the field. We've seen intermediate routes. Let's look at a real quick hitter type, which is I'm a, I'm a, it's basically a wide receiver screen. But because we're operating it from a tight end position and he's even lined up in this game as an H-back, I'm going to call it a swing screen. And this is something I think that you can take advantage of with his athleticism. Simply swing him out to the flat, two blockers, get upfield, and then you got a 250-pound man that's hard for a nickel corner or a regular just starting corner to take down. So this is using his athleticism and his body size to your advantage. It's just another really good play design to take advantage of the defense in this moment. And again, this isn't Moreau being elite. This is simply Moreau doing a, a good job. Simply look, get to your spot, present a target, understand where your blockers are, have that spatial awareness, and then just use your body, the fact that you're 6'4", 250 pounds versus guys who are, you know, 210, and get extra yards. It's exactly what you want. It's just a good, hard, nose-pale, blue-collar tight end. Has deficiencies. Passing game, I think, is not a deficiency. Definitely can see some value in the pass game here. Where you might see the struggle, and I'm curious for those who watch, what do y'all think? Put in the comments down below. Now, I think that where you do see maybe a little bit of struggle is in that aspect of the blocking. How will he be as an inline guy? I think one, he can improve on that. Run blocking, not his forte, but he's definitely a willing blocker. That's important. Pass blocking, I think, is solid enough to be a guy that he's not one-dimensional. And that's what you have to worry about is teams thinking that you're one-dimensional, dedicating players and designs to stop you because the NFL level, they can definitely do that. And they will do that even for something as what you might see as unimportant as tight end number one or tight end number two. You don't have to be a thousand yard tight end or receiver for guys and teams to put an emphasis on stopping you. In fact, Everybody gets a scouting report done on them leading in the week. Like, hey, how do they use Michael Thomas? When do they do, you know, this situation? They're going to do a third and short and call a slant play again. Well, where is it probably going? What side of the field? They tend to go to the open side or the closed side. They tend to attack the boundaries in this situation. All that gets studied throughout the week by the pro scouting department and the film teams. And that means Foster Moreau is part of that. So you got to have a guy who shows that he can be more than just a flex tight end which is, I think, something him and Juwan have done. And both of them have similar talents. I mean, I would argue Juwan is probably ascending a little bit more, but he's also coming from a lower floor than where Moreau is coming from. And it's just good to have another guy from home coming home. I love that, right? I mean, for those who didn't catch it, for those who don't know, if you're somehow oblivious to the history of Foster Moreau, just look at the very top up there and uh, keep that whole bio section college lsu you might have heard of it went to high school jesuit i mean maybe these are ringing some bells i love that type of stuff i love when hometown guys play for the hometown team same reason that we wanted jarvis landry and honey badger to come here so anyway that's the film study i know a little bit shorter than some of our others but you know it's enough i think to give you a solid idea and i'm curious to see how much y'all go out and take a look at some film yourself and if you want to help support the channel it is appreciated not required but Real quick, two things you can do. Number one, hit up our merch store, RevDeuce.com. We got a couple of t-shirts that you can get to rep the New Orleans Saints as well as rep some of our favorite plays. New t-shirt being designed. Now we're going to talk four verts, which is another one that I absolutely love. A classic that you've seen the Saints use that I'd love to see them use again here. And last but not least, join the Discord so you can get in on some of this content as well. Make recommendations. Say, hey, I'd like to see film study on this player. We're going to finish up our film study on the draft picks as well. 
but had to get Foster Moreau in since we just signed him. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe, share it out to the Who Dads, and God bless. Hope you have an amazing day, amazing weekend, and I will catch you on the next video and the Who Dad Confessional Podcast. Deuces, out.